this tips and tricks video we're going to look at um, layered materials and how to control uh, the distribution of those layered materials by uh, the use of the presence tab in the material editor so you can see on screen at the moment I have a, a an object which I've created simply to demonstrate um, how we're going to use layers or what the important principles of layers are in this object you'll see that uh, we have a variety of steps we have vertical faces but more importantly initially are these two faces the two sloping faces here and here now I know that this face is sloping at 30 degrees and this slope is at 45 degrees and you'll see why this is important in a moment so we'll go ahead and we'll look at the uh, editing the material you'll see everything is just a flat white at the moment so I'm just going to name this material layer as white because oh hello somebody can't spell um, it's going to be uh, uh, easier to negotiate all our layers once we've we've built them up so as I say this is about layers not a mixed material why not a mixed material because uh, our influences of environment um, tabs are not as exhaustive as they are with a layer so I'm going to keep it at a simple material and I'm going to look here to the right where the the layer buttons are and I'm going to add a layer okay so the first thing we see is that the the gray layer which has been created by default covers the whole of the white layer I'm just going to turn the um, highlights off just so we can see what we're doing more clearly so the first thing I'm going to do again for clarification is I'm just going to change the color of this layer and make it red and you can see that the layer by default covers everything okay so to isolate and to use uh, layers correctly in terms of uh, material distribution we need to be thinking about where this material is going to occur um, once we've gone through this small exercise it'll become more apparent in terms of a landscape as to what we're looking for with these angles but initially as I say because I know that this bottom angle is 30 degrees we're going to look at the presence of the red at the moment the red goes all the way from the bottom to the top ie 0 to 100 percent basically so 0 on this scale would be 50 percent and every slope range from 0 degrees to 180 degrees so let's start straight away by just changing this setting and I'm going to make it 30 degrees now you can see immediately in the thumbnail in the uh, preview window that red now only appears on a 30 degree angle okay purely and only on a 30 degree angle that's quite that's quite easy to use very very simple you'll see two subsidiary sliders here for steepness and flatness that basically looks at do we want a crisp change of uh, material here or do we want uh, the material to blend uh, from red into white so if we made it uh, fuzzy on both let's see what happens you'll see now it's it's just totally messed things up because all that's doing is it's making the angle just not as accurate as it were in on this particular test object so we'll get our red back and we'll name that layer red again it's a good discipline to get into to make sure that we understand where all our layers are and what we're working on let's make a new layer we'll call this one blue I think it's fairly obvious why we're going to call it blue because we're going to make it blue so let's put it into the blue okay now again by default it's going to cover everything I get rid of the highlights again just so it makes it obvious where the blue actually is so we're going to go to the presence tab and this time we're going to put in 45 degrees we know exactly what our angles are so again it's going to be only constrained 
to 45 degrees. Now we can obviously make it go over a range. So anywhere from zero, which is flat, all the way through to 45 degrees. So we've got zero degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and that top face is zero as well. So we can very easily and very quickly start differentiating between surfaces using the angle. I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to make this one green because there are a couple more um, settings that we need to be aware of uh, to make our materials as flexible as possible. So green again covers everything. Reset. And this time I'm going to restrict it to a 90 degree, i.e. a vertical surface. Okay, so 90 degrees. So again, you can see every vertical surface is now green. We can begin to isolate these surfaces now simply by looking at the next set of sliders, which is the orientation. Now, at the moment, if I say I want everything constrained to zero degrees, so this is, let's say, well, let's see where zero is. Let's just make that 100% tight. So zero degrees and none of the faces we can see at the moment. Let's just turn around a little bit. Still can't see it. So my guess is zero degrees must be the back face. Making it 100% tight means it will only appear on a zero degree face. So consequently, if I think that's zero degrees, to get it on the front face with all the slopes, etc., I'm going to move that through 180 degrees. So theoretically now, we can rotate back round. And as you can see, 100 degrees, because of how I've imported this object, um, this face is at 100 degrees to zero within view. Again, we have more sliders. We've got an altitude range here, so I can make that green only appear all the way down at the bottom. Oh, you can see it's just overlapping onto the next vertical face, so we'll move it slightly. We can also make it appear only on that top vertical face. So we can move it down and down. There we go. So this implies we can have green here, we can have purple here, and we can have brown here, and we could have black there. By setting up each of the layers and having a look at its orientation, its slope constraint, and, and its altitude. So as a quick uh, demonstration as to how this works, let me show you an object that I uh, played with earlier whilst having a look at the uh, flexibility of this technique. So I made a little house like you do. And this little house is textured, but it has a different image file on each elevation. So if I look at the material for this, we have a base color, which was white, which is just the default import of the, the file that I generally, you know, the files I generally import. Each side wall is a different color and a different material. So here we've got some stucco on this wall. We've got um, some, sh some siding, some shingles. Let's have a look at that back elevation a little bit more. So within one material, we have multiple different, uh, yeah, multiple different materials, all laid out according to their presence. So you can see preferred orientation, preferred slope range. So it's a 90 degree, so it's a vertical wall with the orientation of 180 degree degrees, as we saw on the test object. So this means we can take a box, a car, whatever it might be. Again, I'll show you a, a, another example of uh, material distribution using layers, which is probably one of the more complex um, material distributions I've, I've done using this technique, which is a mesh which I have 
made myself for another project and I've textured it using uh, all of the rules that we have in terms of just bear with me for some reason that materials just come in too small I'll just make it the right size okay so as you can see we've got multiple materials here we've got them following different rules and regulations let me just switch off that um, or switch on the auto exposure that's easier to see now so again we can take that chassis as I call it and have a look at the multi-material so base layer is is white then we have the orange the yellow and black is quite an interesting layer because it's these chevrons which only appear on that flat surface down the middle set up by using the presence tab so you've got an altitude range um, slope range doesn't have to be we can make it zero so it just identifies a, you know a horizontal face the last technique which um, I used it for was this particular example, which is more into the landscaping side of things. And this will take a couple of seconds to load. Okay, so the, uh, the scene file is loaded. What you'll see here is a, a custom rock which I quickly sculpted in uh, ZBrush or ZBrush, depending on where you're from. <laughs> um, deliberately sculpted so that we'd got flat surfaces, we'd got rounded surfaces, just to experiment how the, the material distribution works. Now you can see in the preview window what we're expecting to see. I'm just going to make this a preview render, make it a little bit smaller so it's quicker for our purposes. So the material is set up so that the, um, the trees and plants appear only on a certain range of slope. The interesting thing as far as this is concerned is that once you have these rules set up, and let's just quickly look at the rules. So we'll look at the trees first and have a look at their presence. So from zero to 60 degree slope with a little bit of fuzziness top and bottom. So we don't end up with too hard a line on the top and the bottom. Uh, altitude, we're not really bothered about on this particular rock. And then I set up an ecosystem of some roots. In this case, the slope range is from 90 to 180. Uh, but using a 360 degree population so that they will populate on slopes you know uh, under overhangs as it were this truly shows its flexibility as a technique for texturing when we just rotate the rock now bearing in mind we've set up the rules for where plants uh, are, are going to appear so theoretically now view has just done the calculations accordingly and moved the trees from what was the top down onto the new face so each time we rotate this rock in any direction let's rotate here again and let's rotate here because we've set up rules uh, there is a layer also on there by the way for dirt or soil whatever you want to call it so you can see that the dirt is accumulating on certain surfaces. Same distribution as I've used for the trees and the ferns. So each time I rotate the rock, the material moves accordingly so that the trees will only populate A, on the top surface, and B, according to my rules, which is the you know 60 degree distribution. And then you can see the roots hanging down here. I'll just do one one quick uh, one more quick turn and we'll render it out at a better quality and slightly larger render and once again as you can see the trees the soil and the ferns have been redistributed accordingly and the roots where necessary where they're appropriate to appear so that wherever and however you to rotate that rock the trees will appear in the correct positions in terms of the slope uh, the altitude and the orientation 
I hope you found this useful. I, it's a, it's another fun little material to to play with that can obviously be be saved as a material and applied to any rock, mountain, whatever it might be. Um, give me a shout if you use this technique. I'd love to see your renders. And as usual, uh, don't forget to uh, have a look on social media, Facebook, etc., for more tips, tricks, and information about Eon Software view and plant factory thank you very much bye bye